Okay. Now, a little bit ago, I said that the degree gives us the total number of complex zeros. Complex zeros are our imaginary zeros. The imaginary ones come in pairs. So if we have one, we also have its conjugate. Um, but what about the rational zeros? Well, fun fact, if we had something like AX cubed plus blah, 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 plus a constant all the way at the end as our polynomial. In fact, instead of a cube, I'm just going to call it N, but I'm going to make sure it's the leading term, the one we get degree from. So highest degree. So if we have it written decreasing powers um, so that all the way on the left, we have our leading term, all the way on the right, we have our constant. We're gonna call P all of the factors of our constant. We're gonna call Q all of the factors of leading coefficient. Any rational zeros are going to be of the form P over Q. Of course that. Any of the rational zeros we have will be of the form P over Q. That does not mean that all P over Q are rational zeros. It just means that if we have a rational zero, it will be one of the P over Qs. So how would we use this, again, amazing fact? Let's say we had f of x equals negative 2x to the fifth plus 3x squared minus 2x plus 10. Well, P is going to be the factors of 10, plus or minus 1 with plus or minus 10, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 5. Those are the only factors of 10. Q plus or minus one and plus or minus two. That's the only way we're gonna get those. Now let's write all of our possible P over Qs. So plus or minus one over plus or minus one, plus or minus one over plus or minus two. So that's the plus or minus one over both of these. Plus or minus two over plus or minus one. Plus or minus two over plus or minus two. So now I did this one over both of those. Now this one, plus or minus five over plus or minus one, plus or minus five over plus or minus two. One more, 
Now I'll do the, that one over both of these. Sorry for running out of room. I'll just write it over here. Plus or minus 10 over plus or minus one, plus or minus 10 over plus or minus two. So those are all possible combinations of P over Q. Let's simplify these. Plus or minus one over one, that's plus or minus one. Plus or minus one half. Two over one is two, plus or minus two. Two over two, that's one. We already have one. We don't need it again. Five over one is plus or minus five. Five over two, plus or minus five halves. 10 over one, that's plus or minus 10. 10 over two, that's five. We already have five. We don't need it again. So all possible rational zeros are gonna come from this list of 12 things. That does not mean all 12 of these, one, negative one, one half, negative one, half, two, negative two. It doesn't mean all 12 of them are rational zeros, but any rational zeros we have will come from this list. Why is that important to know? Well, because it just narrowed down a lot of numbers to 12. And how can we tell which ones actually are rational zeros? We can check with synthetic division. The ones that give us a remainder of zero, those are the rational zeros. Now we're not actually gonna find them here. We're just doing practice finding our P's over Q's. Again, let's list all the possible rational zeros for f of x equals negative four x to the fourth plus five x cubed minus seven x squared plus eight. What are we doing? What are we doing? Finding the possible rational zeros. So our P's come from the constant. We start on the right. One and eight, two and four. Our Q's, plus or minus one, plus or minus four. Plus or minus two, and plus or minus two. So we just have three there. Two with itself gives us four. Why am I saying plus or minus for all of these? Well, because both the positive number and the negative number are factors. Negative one times positive four, uh, positive one times negative four, positive one times positive eight, negative one times negative eight both positive and negative have to be there. Okay, P over Q. I'm gonna put each of these four over each of these three. So plus or minus one over plus or minus one, plus or minus one over plus or minus two, plus or minus one over plus or minus four. Moving on to the two. Plus or minus two over plus or minus one, plus or minus two over plus or minus two, plus or minus two over plus or minus four. So each of these over one, two, and four. No, 
now the four over everything. Plus or minus four over plus or minus one. Plus or minus four over plus or minus two. Plus or minus four over plus or minus four. Now the eight over everything. Plus or minus eight over plus or minus one. Plus or minus eight over plus or minus two plus or minus eight over plus or minus four. So one, two, four, and eight over one, two, and four. One, two, and four. One, two, and four. One, two, and four. Now, let's narrow this down to what they are. Cross out any duplicates. One over one is one. One over two is one half. One over four is one fourth. Two over one is two. Two over two is one, we already have that. Two over four is one half, we already have that. Four over one is four. Four over two is two, we already have that. Four over four is one, we already have that. Eight over one is eight. Eight over two is four, we already have that. Eight over four is two, we already have that. One, two, three, four, five, six times two is 12. So these 12 numbers are the only 12 possibilities for the rational zeros of this polynomial. Okay. Let's do something. Find the zeros. of f of x equals x cubed minus 4x squared plus 3x plus We don't really have anywhere to start. So let's make our list of possible rational zeros to start testing. P, this is gonna be plus or minus one and plus or minus two. Q, it's only plus or minus one. So P over Q, plus or minus one over plus or minus one, plus or minus two over plus or minus one. So our rational zero possibilities are just so our possible zeros are just one plus or minus one, plus or minus two. So what do we do? We take one of our possibilities, let's start with positive one. And we do synthetic division, one X cubed minus four X squared, three X, two, and we see if we get a remainder of zero. If we do, then it's a zero and we can begin to factor. Bring down the one, multiply one times one is one. Add negative four plus one is negative three. Multiply one times negative three is negative three. Add 
equals zero. One times zero is zero. Add, we get two. One, no. One is not a possible zero. Let's try negative one. <laughs> One, negative four, three, two. Bring down the first number. Multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. Negative six as a remainder, not zero. So negative one is not a zero. Let's try x equals two. One, negative four, three, two. One, negative four, three, two. No, that's not right. Just the one, just bring down the one. Two times one is two. Multiply, add, negative four plus two is negative two. Multiply, two times negative two is negative four, Add three plus negative four is negative one. Multiply two times negative one is negative two. Add, we got zero. That means two is a zero. What do we do with that information? Well, if two is a zero, that means it comes from X minus two. And of course I just erased the rest of that answer, one, negative two, negative one, zero. The rest of it was necessary because it's the leftover piece. We started with X cubes, which means our answers are X squared, one X squared minus two X minus one. This doesn't factor further, but we don't have to do any guessing or anything because when we find the zeros, not only would zero equal X minus two to give us that X equals two, but zero would also equal X squared minus two X minus one, something that we can solve using the quadratic formula. And we're using the quadratic formula with A equals positive one, B equals negative two, and C equals negative one. Don't pull A, B, and C unless everything is on one side and zero is on the other. If this was X squared equals, you can't just pull has to be everything on one side, zero on the other before you pull these numbers out. And how do we work with the quadratic formula? Well, first of all, we have it memorized. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC all over 2a. So x equals the opposite of negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 1 all over 2 times one. So we already have X equals two. Or X equals the rest of these. I guess I can just leave that there. Okay, the opposite of negative two is positive two plus or minus the square root of negative two squared is positive four. Negative four times one times negative one would be plus 
four. All over two times one is two. So X equals two plus or minus radical eight all over two. Radical eight is two radical two all over two. When we split this up again, X equals two over two plus or minus two radical two over two. X equals one plus or minus radical two. So there are our other two. And if we wanna write these out as a set of three things, the first zero we found was two and then one plus radical two and one minus radical two. Why didn't these show up in the list of our rational roots? Well, because these are irrational numbers. Remember, radicals are irrational. R, P over Q, those would just be rational. So the only way we could have found the other two zeros was using the quadratic formula. Find the zeros and their multiplicities. Or f of x equals 2x to the fourth plus 5x cubed minus 2x squared minus 11x, minus 6. So what do we have to do first to find zeros? Let's find our potential rational zeros. So we'll take our p's from the negative 6 plus or minus one, plus or minus six, plus or minus two, plus or minus three. Take our Q's, plus or minus one, plus or minus two. And we're gonna find our P over Q's. So the one over each of these the two over each of these, the three over each of these, the six over each of these. Plus or minus one over plus or minus one, plus or minus one over plus or minus two. Plus or minus two over plus or minus one, plus or minus two over plus or minus two plus or minus three over plus or minus one, plus or minus three over plus or minus two, plus or minus six over plus or minus one, plus or minus six over plus or minus two. So our final P over Q list, simplifying one over one, is one, one over two is one half, two over one is two, two over two is one, we already have that, three over one is three, three over two is three halves, six over one is six, six over two is three, we already have that. 
So our potential rational zeros, one, two, three, four, five, six. Positive and negative versions. So we have 12 possible numbers that could be rational zeros. They are not all rational zeros. They're not all gonna be zeros of the polynomial, but any zeros um, that are rational will come from this list. So we test them. We test them. How do we test them? What are we testing? Well, we're gonna pick one of our potential zeros. We're gonna do synthetic division on it with two positive five, negative two, negative 11, negative six. We're gonna do synthetic division and we're going to see if we get no remainder. No remainder, remember, means it is a zero. We can get a factor from it. So I'll start with positive one. Bring down our first number, multiply and add, multiply and add, multiply and add. Multiply, one times two is two. Add five times two, or five plus two is seven. Multiply, one times seven is seven. Add, multiply, add, multiply, be careful. Add negative six minus six is negative 12. There is a remainder. That means one is not a zero of this function. Let's do a test for negative one. Next, we're just making our way through the list. Synthetically dividing fast. Possibilities passing. We're quiz bound. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Um, bring down the first number. Multiply negative one times two is negative two. Add five plus negative two. Five minus two is three. Multiply. Add. Multiply, add, multiply, be careful. Negative one times negative six is positive six. Add, no remainder. Negative one is a zero. What does that mean? That means that our function If negative one's a zero, that means there's an X plus one times the rest. Well, what is the rest? This came from an X to the fourth, means it comes down to a two X cubed plus three X squared minus five X minus six. Negative one's a zero, so x plus one gives us the minus one. Now, there is a hint on what to do next in the directions here. It very explicitly said, find the zeros and their multiplicities. What does that mean, multiplicities? Well, right now, this negative one has a multiplicity of one. It comes from x plus one to the first power. By saying, hey, find the multiplicities, it's reminding you, it's nudging you. The multiplicity can be higher than one. Maybe negative one is a zero again. 
Well, we take we take our leftover. We do synthetic division again. The zeros, the ones that uh, are potentially there, we still have our list. That hasn't changed. We already ruled positive one out. We already have a negative one in there. Let's check and see if negative one has a multiplicity greater than one. Let's see if it's a factor again. We do synthetic division on the leftover piece. Bring down the first number, multiply and add. Multiply, add. Multiply, add. Multiply, and we look at that. When we add, we get no remainder again. That means negative one right now has a multiplicity of two. The factor is actually x plus one squared. The leftover piece. came from an x cubed originally. Now it's down to a 2x squared plus x minus 6. Now, we could continue, bring this leftover piece up, do synthetic division again on negative one, let it ride, go through the rest of the list. But we have a quadratic here, 2x squared plus x minus six. Well, that we could factor. We can factor this. Airplane method. 2x squared will factor as a 2x and a 2x. It'll express this way until we simplify. A times C, 2 times negative 6. We need numbers that multiply to negative 12. Add here to positive 1. That's going to be positive, oh, positive four and negative three. Airplane method says we can divide this by two, so do it. That gives us x plus two times two x minus three. So this piece here, it actually factors to x plus 2, 2x two minus 3. We have found the factored form. So now we can find all the zeros. We already found x equals negative 1 with a multiplicity of 2. x plus 2 equals 0 gives us x equals negative 2, a multiplicity of 1, because it only comes from a single factor of x plus 2 and x equals positive three halves with a multiplicity of one. Our function f of x equals x to the fourth minus two x squared minus three. Let's go ahead and do this how we've been doing it. Let's go through the whole process. P 
plus or minus one plus or minus three. Q is just going to be plus or minus one. Factors of three are one and three. Factors of one, the leading coefficient, that's just one. So our P over Q is going to be plus or minus one over one. It's going to be plus or minus three over one. So our possible rational zeros are just plus or minus one and plus or minus three. Let's do the synthetic division. Let's test one on one X to the fourth, zero X cubed, minus two x squared, zero x minus three. Gotta have placeholder holders for the q. Placeholders for the cube and the regular x, they're missing. Remember, leave the placeholder zeros. Fourth, cube, squared, first power, constant. Bring down the first number, multiply and add, Multiply and add, multiply and add, multiply, and add. There's a remainder. One is not it. Let's try negative one. So negative one in the box. 1x to the fourth, 0x cubed, negative 2x squared, 0x minus 3. Bring down the first number. Multiply and add. Multiply and add. Multiply and add. Multiply and add. Remainder. Negative one is not it. Let's try three. Positive three. Bring down the one, multiply and add. Multiply and add. Multiply and add. Multiply and add. Nope. Let's try the negative three. It's the only one left. It's the only possibility left. Bring down the one. Multiply and add. Multiply and add. Multiply and add, multiply, hmm. remainder for all four possibilities, that must mean we don't have any rational zeros. But find the zeros we're still expected to do. So let's take a look at what we have here. There must be something we know how to do to solve this thing. Hmm. Well, x to the fourth, x squared. This looks like a job for factoring by substitution. We can let u equal x squared. That means that u squared would be x to the fourth. So that means this would be u squared minus 2u minus 3. And when we see it that way, then what we do is 
really clear. We factor. Can we factor? We would need numbers that multiply to give negative three, add to give negative two, negative three and positive one. U minus three and U plus one. And then that would mean that U equals three and U equals negative one. Now, wait a minute, we tried three and we tried negative one and those weren't factors. No, they're not. Or they weren't zeros, they're not. Because this is a problem about X's, we solved for U. U is actually X squared. So U equals three and U equals one, that's X squared equals three and x squared equals negative one. This is about to get wild, yo. So x squared equals three and x squared equals negative one. Another way you might get this far is by realizing, and guess what? That's still factoring by substitution. It's the same thing we just did. Here, it's just like the variable is x squared. So we just factor like normal, but the variable is x squared. And the numbers that we use are negative three and positive one. And we had this set equal to zero. So zero is x squared minus three or zero is x squared plus one. So x squared is negative one or x squared is positive three. So like I said, x squared equals positive three, x squared equals negative one, because that's what our u's were and u is x squared. Okay, make sure you're good up to here. And now we'll continue. Take the square root of both sides. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of three, don't forget, plus or minus the square root of three. Here, square root of x squared is x. The square root of negative one plus or minus the square root of negative one or plus or minus i. Square root of negative one, remember, is i. There's two answers. There's two answers. So the zeros. Radical three, negative radical three, I, and negative I. Why weren't any of our rational zeros zeros? Well, the zeros we ended up with, none of them were rational. Square root of three and negative square root of three, irrational numbers i and negative i, imaginary numbers, complex numbers. Not a, one of these four is rational, which is why that list we found, our p over q, those are the list of potential rational 
zeros. We're not going to find all of our zeros there. But between the rational zeros we find and the irrational zeros we find, the degree of the polynomial will tell us how many total we have. This was an x to the fourth. So in the end, when we take our rational zeros, our irrational zeros, our imaginary zeros, our complex zeros, there will be four of them total. And notice here, i and negative i are both there. When we have complex zeros, when we have zeros involving i, They come in pairs. If a plus b i is a zero, then so is a minus b i. So since we had plus i, minus i is guaranteed to come along with it. We don't have to do any special work to find it. Okay. Let's do another. If it feels like we've been doing the same thing for a very long time, that's because we have been doing the same thing for a very long time. f of x equals x to the fourth minus 6x cubed plus 28x squared minus 18x plus 75. We're going to do three things. Given that three minus four I is a zero. Given this information, we are going to A, find the remaining zeros, we are going to B, factor And then we're going to see solve f of x equals zero. Now, I could have just said solve f of x equals zero. We would still have to do a to get b. We would have to do b to get c. But it's being broken down into these three steps. But if you want to imagine that the long-term goal here is zero equals all that. It's the same work, start to finish. Okay, so let's find the remaining zeros. One of them is easy. Since three minus four i is one of the zeros, that means three plus four i
comes as a bonus. Woo -hoo. And we can work with that. Let's let's not even worry about the um, rational roots theorem right now, because they gave us a complex one. We get another complex one after that. That's going to give us two in the long run. That'll take us down to an x squared. When all's said and done, we'll consider what to do uh, with the remaining ones once we see what we get left with. So how can we find more? Well, if this is a zero, that means that x minus this thing is a factor. And since it's x minus that whole thing, it's actually got to be in parentheses. x minus 3 plus 4i is what that factor would work out to if we wrote it all out. We're going to leave it x minus the 0. Well, same thing we do with any 0. It just so happens that we're not going to have a good time with our math. Let's put 3 minus 4i in the box. Let's set up synthetic division. 1x to the fourth minus 6x cubed plus 28x squared minus 18x plus 75. I'm so sorry. Let's bring down the one. Let's multiply and add. Multiply. Anything times one is itself. And add negative six plus three would be negative three minus four i. And now we multiply this three minus four i times this negative three minus four i. So off on the side somewhere, I'm going to have off to the side land here in the middle of everything. We're going to multiply 3 minus 4i times negative 3 minus 4i. Foiling first. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Outer, 3 times negative 4i is negative 12i. Inner, negative 4i times negative 3 is positive 12i. Last, negative 4i times negative 4i is positive 16i squared. Minus 12i plus 12i cancel out. That's negative 9 plus 16i squared. But i squared is negative 1. Negative 9. This would be minus 16 or plus negative 16 to get us to minus 16. All of that, negative 9 minus 16 is negative 25. So that 3 minus 4i times this negative 3 minus 4i is negative 25. Back to regular land, put in our minus 25. Add, in this case, plus negative 25 is 28 minus 25. That's positive 3. Multiply this times three. We're going to distribute. We're going to get 
9 minus 12i. 3 times the 3 minus 4i we distribute. We get 9 minus 12i. Add negative 18 plus 9. That's another negative 9 minus 12i. So we're going to do off to the side land again. We're going to do 3 minus 4i times negative 9 minus 12i. Okay, so off on the side somewhere, I'm going to be right here in the middle of everything. Three times negative nine is negative 27. Three times negative 12i is negative 36i. Inner, negative 4i times negative nine, that's positive 36i. Last, negative 4i times negative 12i, that's positive 48 I squared. Negative 36 I plus 36 I cancel each other out. Negative 27 plus 48 I squared. Negative 27 plus 48 times negative one works out to negative 27 minus 48. Negative 27 minus 48, that's going to be even more negative. Negative 75. 75 minus 75 is zero. I'm glad we got zero because that means we did all of our math right because we knew there wouldn't be a remainder. Why did we know there wouldn't be a remainder? Because we were told this was a zero. Well, if we knew it was a zero, then why were we doing all that? Because we needed this leftover piece. Normally, we take the leftover piece and we could write a polynomial from it. Here we wouldn't be able to. Started as an x to the fourth, but x cubed plus negative three minus four i x squared. Mm. These are the coefficients of the quotient, but we're not gonna make a polynomial out of it. Instead, We're going to make these the new thing that we're going to synthetically divide. And we're going to use our bonus zero. We did the regular synthetically dividing by the three minus four i zero. Remember, we get the bonus three plus four i. Let's divide by that next. Bring down the one. Multiply three plus four i. Add negative three plus three is zero. Negative four i plus four i is zero. Hey, that's great. This is some easy stuff. I like that. Multiply anything times zero is zero. Add three plus zero is three. Multiply three times this thing. We're going to distribute the three. We get nine plus 12 I. And again, as expected, no remainder. Negative nine plus nine is zero. Negative 12 I plus 12 I is zero. It was an x to the fourth taken down to x cubed, which is now taken down to x squared. So this is 1x squared plus 0x plus 3. 
So x squared plus three. is part of the quotient. So let's factor what we have so far. Let's just express what we've done. X minus our given zero, three minus four I. It's minus the whole thing, so I have parentheses. And then X minus three plus four I, that's our bonus zero. And we're left with X squared plus three. Well, we know how to solve that. You're like, we do? Yeah, we do. Let me put a zero here. This equal to zero was our given zero this equal to zero was our bonus zero, the rest we would get from x squared plus three equals zero. x squared equals negative three. x equals plus or minus the square root of negative three. x equals plus or minus i radical three. So we have four zeros. The given three minus four I, the bonus that comes along with it, three plus four I. And then I radical three and negative I radical three. And even if we only solved and got one of them, the bonus would be the other. But when we solve, we get both. So if I were to factor this as a product of linear factors, then that x squared plus three would further factor to x minus i radical three times x minus negative radical three, x plus i radical three. So this times this times this times this, the four factors together. But it's weird to see factors with i and with the radical like that. And I'm sorry that I ran out of space, but just imagine all four of those next to each other. So it's a factored form of linear factors. Why are they called linear factors? Because our X is just to the first power. We had to make everything look ridiculous to get it like that, but we got it and we found the zeros.